So you want to start learning algebra, huh? Well, do I have the deal for you? You give me five minutes. I'll give you everything you need to know to start learning algebra. Deal? Awesome. Why don't we get started with your very first algebra problem? Blank plus three equals five. What number should go in the blank? I'll give you three seconds. If you said two, then congratulations, you just did your very first algebra problem. So in algebra, we don't use blanks, we use letters, and letters are called variables. But it's literally the same thing as a blank. If you had to solve for x, for x plus 3 equals 5, it's literally the same thing as blank plus 3 equals 5. Letters are just blanks that you can insert numbers into. So the answer to this problem, x plus 3 equals 5, would be x equals 2, because 2 goes in the blank. Now, obviously, the problems get a little more complicated than this. Like, for example, what if x is inside of a square root? What if x has an exponent on it? What if x is the exponent? But just remember that letters in algebra are literally just blanks that you could put numbers into. Now having to solve for a letter is cool and all, but at some point some guy was like, yo, what if we put two letters in an equation instead of one? If you have both x and y in an equation, then this becomes a function. And if you want, instead of y, you can write f of x if you want to sound like really fancy. The way I like to think about functions is like a machine. So basically how this works is we're going to put in numbers on the left side of the machine. And then the machine's going to do some stuff to it, and then it's going to give us out a number on the right side. And we use the letter X to show the numbers that we're putting inside, and then we use the letter Y for the numbers that we're getting out. So for example, what happens if I put the number 4 into this machine? Well, basically the number 4 is going to go inside, and then it's going to do its little calculations. It's going to go, okay, you put in 4 for X, so 4 plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. So the machine is going to spit out 5 when I put in 4. And this works for any number. So you can put in any number in the machine and see what you get out. And that's basically what a function is. Now, once you've used your new shiny machine a few times, you can put your results on a graph. So the way that I like to think about graphs is it's like a recipe book. So when you're cooking, you look at your recipe book. And basically what it tells you is if you put in these ingredients, you will get out this food. So like, for example, here we have the graph of y equals x plus 1, which is the recipe book for this machine. So here's how you read this graph. On the left and right, these are all of your ingredients. These are all what you're putting into the machine. And these numbers up and down, these are your dishes. These are what you're getting out of the machine. So for example, if we want to find out what happens when we put four into the machine, we need to go to four on the left and right line here, which is called the X axis. So we're going to go four squares to the right. And now to see what we're going to get out of the machine if we put in four, we just need to see how far up or down we go. And in this case, we need to go all the way up to five. See, this is lined up with five here. So that means if we put four into the machine, we're going to get out five. And that makes sense. That's what we just did. We put in four and then it did four plus one and we got five. So that's literally all a graph is. It's just a recipe book. Now, let's be honest. People often make math way more complicated than it needs to be. And so one of the most important things that you learn to do in algebra is called simplify. So for example, let's look at this thing. This is more complicated than it needs to be. So our goal is to make it more simple, to just make it shorter. And one of the most common ways that you simplify equations in algebra is called combining like terms. So for example, here we have four X and we have a 3x. Well, why do we have both of these here? I mean, why don't we just add 4 plus 3, which is 7, and just turn this into 7x? Well, look at that. Now we've just made the equation one part shorter because we did not need to have 4x and 3x here. We could have just combined them. But what about this? Can you combine these? Well, actually, no, because the combining like terms part the like terms means that they have to have the same letter. So if you have an X in one of them and a Y in the other, you can't add or subtract them. So that would mean that this is the most simple version of what we had up here at the beginning. So this is possibly going to be one of the weirdest things that you learn in algebra. Remember that a square root is basically just what number do you have to multiply twice to get a number. So like, for example, the square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times 4 is 16. But you may have learned that you can't take the square root of a negative number because no matter what if you multiply two of the same number it will always turn positive so you can't take the square root of a negative number or so we thought until some engineers were doing their math problems and they were like yo wait dude why are we getting negative square roots in our problem and as it turns out that these numbers which we call imaginary numbers are actually really necessary to solve real problems i know that a lot of the times it's easier to understand visually so i want you to imagine a number line with the negative numbers on the left and the positive numbers on the right imaginary numbers would be like if a giant rift opened up in the middle of the number line and started spitting out numbers above and below if you're 
just starting algebra, you don't need to know about imaginary numbers yet. I just think it's a cool thing to look forward to. So congratulations, you're now ready to start learning algebra. And from my experience tutoring students in algebra, if you just learn a couple of the things in this video, like solving for x or combining like terms, you're already going to be ahead of most students. So if you're interested, I do have full videos on all the things I talked about in this video. The links will be in the description. But now that you know what to expect, it looks like you're ready to begin your algebra journey. So if you're ready to start, then this video is for you. If you have any questions about anything in this video, then feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer your question. Thanks for watching and good luck on your algebra journey.